Hello and welcome back to my channel Christian Faith and Fiction. My name's Lou. Today I'm going to share with you 23 books that I want to read in 2023. I'm not going to try and pick up this stack of books because it's already a bit precarious. It already feels a bit like a, a giant game of book Jenga, which uh, would be really sad if they all fell down. Um, I've got 23 books off of my bookshelves that I already own and um, that I would like to read in 2023. I want to prioritise reading books that I already have um, because I've got quite a few. These are just some of them, there are a few more on there. Of course I'd love to read all of the books on my shelf that I haven't read yet, but these are the ones I've picked out to prioritise this year. I don't know what order I want to read them in yet, so I'm just going to go through them in like genre order, starting with historical fiction. And I'm going to sort of swap them over so you can see them as we go. So. Uh, the first one is The Mistletoe Countess by Pepper Basham. This is one I'm planning to read beginning of January, so this definitely is a priority one. And this is a um, an unanticipated marriage unites an unlikely pair to unravel a ghostly Christmas mystery. So I'm still kind of in Christmas. It's January the 3rd today. <laughs> I've lost track over Christmas. Um, it's still like within the 12 days of Christmas, so I should get that one done at the beginning of the year. Then we have the Gilded a Gilded Lady by Elizabeth Camden. This has been on my shelf for ages. Um, I think a group of ladies are wanting to read this one this, uh, this year together. Um, I read the first one, Spice King, uh, a few years ago, and I enjoyed that one. Then I heard some other um, friends say that they weren't so keen on the main character in this one so it's put me off but I really do need to get on and read this one um, for myself I think. And then I have The Sisters of Sea View by Julie Classen. This was a new release at the end of last year and this was set in Sidmouth which is just up the road from me and it's Regency I think. Um, so I really want to get to this one pretty soon. Finding Lady Enderley by Joanna Davison Politano. I have heard a lot of good things about this author and I enjoy historical mystery romances. Uh, so I think I'm going to enjoy her. I hope I will. I've got several of her books in ebook form as well and audiobook. Um, and I haven't read any by her yet. So this is the one I've got in paperback. So I want to get to this one at some point this year. Set the Stars Alight by Amanda Dykes is dual time period and it is um, as Lucy and Dash explore mysterious ruins on the East Sussex coast their search leads them to a community of souls and a long hidden tale that may hold the answers and the healing they so desperately seek. Um, this is actually a group read for January so I definitely will need to get to that one this year. Then I've also got her new release um, Amanda Dykes' All the Lost Places, which is set in Venice um, in 1807 and 1904. Uh, when a baby is discovered floating in a basket along the quiet canals of Venice, a guild of artisans takes him in and raises him as a son, skilled in each of their trades. Um, and that cover is really beautiful and intriguing, and I that's a place I would love to go to may never get to, who knows, but um, I'd love to go to there in a fictional story. The Socialite by Janelle Chazilski is a book that's been on my shelf for quite a while. I read The Ice Swan by her last in 2021 um, and I enjoyed that one a lot and it's set in the Second World War. Glamour, treachery and romance collide when an English socialite throws herself into the dangerous arms of Nazi-occupied Paris. So again, another place I'd love to travel to and right from the beginning I saw this cover, I loved that sort of red dress against the Paris wartime night sky or yeah, sunset, sun, sunset, daybreak, not sure. But yeah, definitely would like to read that. I've got quite a few um, 
historical books, it seems, that I haven't read yet. So definitely need to get some more of those. And then this was a gift um, for Christmas. And this is Tamara Alexander, Christmas at Carnton. And I think I'm going to get to that one in um, next Christmas, so December, but definitely this year. Um, so, amid war and the fading dream of a confederacy, a wounded soldier and a destitute widow discover the true meaning of Christmas and sacrificial love. I think this one had won an award, or I'd seen it somewhere, um, but it was on my wish list. Um, so, look forward to an historical Christmas book for next year. Then I pre-ordered a book um, called The Brilliance of Stars by Janelle Chazilski and this hasn't arrived yet. It did come out last year, the end of last year, but um, the pre-order hasn't arrived yet, but I want to read that one. Um, and then I've got a number of books by Melanie Dickerson, which I haven't read yet and I want to read this year. So The um, Fortress of Snow by Melanie Dickerson, again, that's one of the pre-orders that I've ordered but hasn't arrived yet and then I've got several books from her Hagenheim series which I haven't got to yet I'd like to get to those this year if I can um, so that is the golden braid um, which I think is like a Rapunzel retelling these are all medieval um, young adult books so that one um, the orphan's wish which I think is like a an Aladdin, uh, it's, I thought it was the other way around, but yeah, no, it, I think it's an Aladdin retelling. The Silent Songbird, which I believe is like a Little Mermaid type of retelling. And finally, The Peasant's Dream, which is like a reversed Cinderella story. I've enjoyed reading all of this series so far, so hopefully I'm gonna like all the sort of the final ones in that. There is a lot of books in that series. And then in contemporary romance, books I've got that I'd like to read are um, To Win a Prince by Tony Shiloh. This is the second book in the series. I really love the first book and um, I'm really interested to see how it takes. This is like the best friend from the first book and there was a good amount of faith content in that book. So I'm, I'm really hopeful for that. Set on an African island. Uh, I've got Can't Help Falling by Cara Isaac. I read another of her books that was set in um, New Zealand last year and this one is set in Oxford and to do with two people who like C.S. Lewis I think and uh, it's a romance and so I'm definitely in for that one. And then we have All That Really Matters by Nicole Deese. This I've heard nothing but good things about it and I love this cover. I really want to try a Nicole Deese book and I have this one so I would like to give that one a go this year. The Happy Camper by Melody Carlson. I've only ever read, I think I've only ever read her Christmas novellas and I enjoyed most of the ones I've read by her. Um, this is like a full size novel so I will we'll see what it's like but it's a very summery sort of looking one so I hopefully I'll pick up that one in maybe in the summery time or if I'm wanting to feel summery at some point. Uh, we've got quite a few Courtney Walsh books in our house and uh, this is the first one that I bought and I still haven't read anything by her. Um, this is Just Look Up and oh yeah, I'm going to try her out and see what I think of her as an author. And then in um, fantasy, I've got the second book in the Wingfeather saga, North or Be Eaten. I need to continue with this so um, this series I read the first book a little while ago and enjoyed it I really like these these editions they have lovely covers um, yeah it's not a graphic novel by the way in case you think that um, it is a actual novel but it does have a few illustrations in it and I think it's middle grade uh, The Story Peddler by Lindsay A. Franklin this is I think a quite popular series in fantasy. Definitely want to try it out for myself. Um, it looks intriguing from the cover. Selling stories is a deadly business. Tanwin doesn't just tell stories, she weaves them into crystallized sculptures that sell for more than a few bits. So it sounds like she's able to turn stories into sculptures, which is really intriguing. 
this tarot is getting sort of slightly wobbly. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I have Carla Loriano's Oath of the Brotherhood, first book in the Song of the Seer. Again, I've read uh, quite a few of her uh, contemporary romance books and I enjoyed them. They didn't really have much faith in them. Um, but I'm really interested to read her fantasy series to see what that's like. I expect that I'll enjoy the writing style. Um, we'll see whether, how much uh, faith it has in this one. And finally, I've got On a Bound by Hallie Bridgman. This is the only physical copy of a mystery and suspense book that I own. Um, all the other mystery and suspense books I've got on ebook so I've got quite a few of those if I wanted to dig into those uh, but this one I want to prioritise it was given to me at Christmas um, thank you Holly and this is I think this was Katie's one of Katie's favourite series last year so I am intrigued to get into this one see whether um, see whether I like it or not it's, I think she said it had good faith content. I'm not sure. But yeah. Looking forward to that one as well. So that is the final book, I think. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Yes. Okay, so these are the 23 books that I would want to prioritise reading in 2023. Let me know in the comments if you've got any books that you own that you really want to get to this year. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting or sharing my videos. I really do appreciate it when you um, take the time to do that. It makes it more of a conversation and part of being in a community, which I love. Okay guys, I hope you have a really great reading week and until next time, God bless. Bye.